All right, welcome aboard everybody and good to see you all here for our first live look at Expeditions, a Mud Runner game. This is not SnowRunner. This doesn't play anything like SnowRunner or Mud Runner. It's a very interesting, very good concept of a spin-off game for sure. Uh, a lot of the things you see here will be similar to SnowRunner and uh, Mud Runner as well, but it plays much differently and it's uh, why they start with the word Expeditions. And uh, yeah, it's not what I expected. It's very different, uh, yet it plays very... Uh, the, the vehicle handling is just as good. The dirt destruction, you know, the, the rolling and the vehicle destruction, stuff like that, all very similar, but it handles much differently. So welcome aboard. Good to see you all here. For those of you curious, um, if you're just wondering, the game will be coming out on the 5th of March, 2024, for everybody. Steam, Epic, whatever else. It will not have multiplayer at launch. It will come eventually. So it'll be a single-player game at the start, but we'll go into multiplayer eventually. Uh, Pre-purchase now is $39.99, but there's like a big old Mega Deluxe Supreme Edition, whatever. Uh, lots of vehicles in this one, but more focused on off-road exploration. So a lot more focus on um, scout vehicles, smaller vehicles, although it has the vehicles, a lot of vehicles from, uh, from SnowRunner uh, in this MudRunner game. And it uh, has a lot of things that we haven't seen before, like, for example, environments that have a lot less trees. So there's anchor points, but we do have like Carpathians and um, uh, Arizona to explore at the start, as well as some other things coming. There's going to be mod support, it looks like, immediately in the game. It's already kind of part of the, the game itself. And there's a lot more to do with scanning and exploring and looking for resources. So we're basically going to unexplored areas and areas where there's not a lot of uh, uh, civilization to go and do stuff. And like, yeah, set up camps and things like that. So it's a little bit more, it's not so much SnowRunner with the building bridges and get, you know, haul 14 logs to the furniture factory and then turn those into goods and then bring that over to another place and then deliver this and that. It, it's much more on exploration and more more like survival. Like it's it's literally, it's not a survival game with health and eating and stuff like that, but it does have a lot to do with that survival game aspect where you have to plan. Like if you've played... Um, the long dark before or any of those like winter survival games or where you got to go a long distance and make sure you plan out enough water and things like that. It's kind of like that, except you're planning out your fuel and you can scan for like uh, mud and running water and stuff like that. And so game's got a lot of cool uh, heart to it. It is very, very, very different though. It's a little arcadey in some aspects a little bit like with certain things, but it's very much a simulator at the same time. So um, just know that um yeah this is this is different and it's i think it's good i, I actually really think it's a, a well done thing uh there's also modifiers like team recruitment so you can recruit people who can give you different modifiers too through the story and there is kind of a there is a linear story they want you to go through but there's also like an endless open world survival thing too so there's there's both which will be fun for uh, multiplayer as well Although I don't know how co-op's going to work. So anyway, let's get started. Let's jump into the game and take our first look. I'll be dropping a video later today too to take a little bit more in-depth look at some of the things that you may have questions on. So definitely subscribe to the channel, turn on that notification bell, and check out our video on YouTube a little later today after this uh, that will cover a few more, more things in the game. Nicholas is our resident expert in the YouTube chat. Nicholas has played a lot of SnowRunner with us. I've played Mud Runner previously. I loved Mud Runner, and I also really liked um, uh, Spin Tires a lot as well as those DLCs. I'm assuming the reason they went with Mud Runner here for the name is because the in, <laughs> the environments that we're going to don't have snow, like Arizona. Well, it may snow in some of these places, but they're not known for it. If you're going to explore, it's probably more, um, you know, going to be more like this in most cases. So anyway, welcome aboard. Yeah, I'll be playing with a, uh, I'll be playing with a um, Xbox controller today. But this is the type of game you can also fully play with a steering wheel. You can also play this with a mouse and keyboard. Uh, preferably, I think a, I like I like the steering wheel a lot. I think it's it's probably 50-50. Uh, keyboard, not really so much for me, but it, you probably should use it for certain things like in the menus if you if you're playing on PC. But uh, steering wheel and controller are probably like 50-50. Like they're really, they're really good both ways. So good music too. A really good, really good thing. Hell yeah, brother. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, so I've already played a little bit. But as you can see, uh, co-op is coming soon. 
There is already a mod browser, so you'll be able to uh, go to uh, get some mods and stuff. But you have to kind of do it through a, a site. So I don't know how it'll work with the workshop, though. There could be a way around that. So I don't know if there's Steam Workshop support, but there are mods. Which, any time that there's not Steam Workshop for a game like this, it's like... But it's also on consoles. So this is a way... Uh, and Epic. So this is a way for anybody who doesn't have Steam or is not playing on Steam to get around that. And then there will be DLC, too. With a year one pass already locked in. But I think these may come with the game if you... I think there's a version of the game that comes with these, but I'm not sure which one. It could have been that Supreme Pack. All right, well, let's go ahead and start a fresh new game and go explore. Oh, wait, it says I did 0% of the game? That's not true. Actually, let's start fresh. I'll delete that game. It may be corrupt anyway or something. All right, cool. Well, welcome aboard, everybody. Glad to have you all here for our first live look at Expeditions, a Mudrunner game. I hope you're all doing well today. Again, don't forget to smash that like button if you're watching on YouTube. Don't forget to follow on Twitch and subscribe. And let's see what this game is all about. Would you like to go through the tutorial? Yes, let's do that. Let's do that indeed. I like how our base is made out of shipping containers. <laughs> Before jumping into your first expedition, let's learn the basics of driving. Right trigger to fire up the engine, A to release the handbrake. To start moving, hold right trigger and left. Ooh. Well, li hold on, listen to those vehicle sounds, baby. There's our headlights. Go in the vehicle. Oh yeah, so we got a fully... Um, Fully functioning uh, interior, and let's listen to that engine. Nice. So yeah, definitely a lot of sounds from SnowRunner already. Sounds good. Yeah, I love the music for sure. And the interior looks good too. Although I don't think we can turn on things like the dome light or anything. But the speedometer should work. Also, if you're playing with a steering wheel and you want to get rid of this guy's hands, there is an option to turn off uh, hands in the cab, which does throw me off a little bit, so let's do that. I think that's a thing. Yeah, let's do that. But now it's just us. But you can turn that on and off as you like. Cool. Alright, let's go to camp. Hell yeah, brother, brother, yeah, yeah. We did it, guys. We beat the game. All right, guys. Thanks for joining me. Appreciate it. All right. Uh, keep following the quest markers to progress. Yeah, the, the base is literally shipping containers. Stage complete. Uh, to move further, you'll need to engage the all-wheel drive, making the traversal of any rough terrain much easier, but at the cost of high fuel consumption. Engage all-wheel drive. Also, we have things set to gallons, but let's go... Uh, Traditionally in SnowRunner, we use um, metric, so let's switch things to metric. Where is that? Hell yeah, brother. Italiano. Wow, lots of languages.
Stage complete. Uh, if you're completely stuck, you must engage the differential lock. This will help a lot. In order to do so, you'll have to shift to a lower gear. Diff lock, AWD on. That's really just if we get stuck, though. But we'll keep it on and see how it works. So this game has a lot more to do with, like, planning rather than, like, uh... SnowRunner was very much, like, off-road ATS or Euro Truck in many ways. So this has a lot more to do with the, uh, hidden stuff. Like route planning. Be careful, chat's hidden in the bushes. I see you, chat. I see you. Uh, X to enter exchange mode. On the left is your vehicle's inventory. The right side is the resource area. Select the quest item and add it to the vehicle's inventory and close the menu. So we're picking up a memory card, a storage device that holds a lot of data. Looks like some of these points also have fuel, spare parts, and wheels for us, too. So I think there's actually the w a way where we can set up these resource zones, which are essentially just like a, like a small camp that holds some extra fuel and stuff for you. That's cool. Looks like somebody was taking photos and stuff over here. Now we're switching to all. Can you race in this? Um, there may be race map. There are certainly some more vehicles that are like off-road capable of higher speed. There might there might be some of that. Maybe a mission or two might require you to do things speedy. Tire inflation system. Now, this is new. This is something we haven't seen in the vanilla game before. So this is really cool. So we can actually go normal uh, or lower tire pressure, which is really going to help with rock crawling and going up the side of cliffs, and it works It works pretty nice. Uh, adjusting the pressure depending on the type of terrain, reducing it will significantly improve tire, uh, in, improve traction, but at the cost of higher fuel consumption. Let's try. So down, and then, so we're at normal pressure, pressure now. Look at that. Fuel efficiency drops from A- minus to B-. minus. Look at that. But as you can see, it helps with the rocks. So it doesn't get much better than excellent, so we wouldn't have to go more than reduced pressure. It's not like it goes from excellent to, like, superb or something like that. But this, finally, we have a way to get over rocks a lot easier. Before, you could have, like, a, you could have Bigfoot, a monster truck, and, and be like, oh, there's a pebble in the way. Well, roads closed, boys. Now, <laughs> roads? We don't need roads. Although you can't really, it's kind of hard to tell, like looking at the tires, whether or not they're inflated or not. Like if we if we stop on this rock here, it it, it seems to modify the su suspension, but the tires don't really look different maybe a little bit oh yeah uh, a little bit there's a little there's a little difference but it's very hard to tell do you have to watch that gauge on the left side oh, I'm thinking of the uh, snow runner controls uh, yep there we go it's gonna be tricky switching between snow runner in this game if your controls are different Pacific Drive or Expedition? Brother, uh, look, this year is going to be amazing for off-road driving simulators. Uh, Pacific Drive was an amazing game taking place in the Pacific Northwest in the United States. Really cool. And this is really cool, too. So it's like, I got to recommend both because this is going for more realism and hardcore, you know, like true off-road driving IRL. But Pacific Drive was, was quite the drive. Refueling expeditions will take you across long distances. For this, we recommend taking fuel canisters with you. Oh, we're going to fuel ourselves up. I 
I don't know where the fuel canisters were. Oh, right there. You can actually see them right behind the cab. Nice. If your vehicle is damaged, use spare parts to repair the damaged components. Uh, left, and then we're going to... Oh, I, oh, I see. So we can repair parts individually. So wheels, gearbox, engine, gas tank, suspension. Can't repair the tires, though. The tires might require an actual spare tire to repair. I see we have two, though. Although there's only one behind the cab. And that's not even the same tire we're rolling with. Oh, is that two tires? No, that's one big old tire. That's weird. That's not even the tire we have equipped. Hmm. But yeah, we have two spare tires. It must just be a visual thing to show you. Hey, you've got a tire. That's probably what it is. The devs didn't model in every single tire. But that tire is there to show you that you have that option. Like, hey, if you get a flat tire, you got one in your inventory without having to look in your inventory. Because your inventory is literally the back of the truck. Deliver supplies to the main office. Hell yeah, brother! Hell yeah! You drove over there and then came back. 3000 bucks. Imagine that. Wow. We're in uh, Little Colorado right now. I thought we'd go to Arizona. I thought maybe there's three locations. There's all of our stats. We got time, distance traveled, used fuel. So this is all about planning. So like, you know, if you want to, there's ways to like try to optimize. Let's return to headquarters. Uh, select a drop off region. Little Colorado is the perfect place to hone your skills. Oh, there's Arizona, yeah. So we got Little Colorado, Arizona, and Carpathian. So we got three areas to go to. And there's quite a few... From what I've seen, there's a lot of content in these. There's like... These aren't just three regions. There's there's maps within these regions. So there's three regions, and then there's like... A few maps in each region. We'll have to... We'll take a look. We'll learn as we go. Expeditions are the main missions. Progress through the game and earn various rewards by completing them. Oh yeah, so there's your free roam. So you, you are allowed to free roam. Free roaming is the thing. And then there's your missions. The, these are basically like taking contracts in SnowRunner, but they're map-based. So it changes the map each time. Or like you, yeah. You can see how the map's changing. Like different places to go, that kind of thing. All right, first expedition for Expeditions Incorporated. Your first assignment. You have to go through the mountains and install a radio module that will improve the signal quality at the base. Uh, but be careful, the road is not easy. We'll need to bring a jack screw and a sideboard vehicle with us. Easy, 1,000 meters off-road. Height differences is the terrain, watery terrain. Prepayment, 1,500. Payment, 2,000. And rewards. Oh, there we go. So if we do this, we'll unlock a new truck, the Don 71, and a, su a specialist logis uh, log logistics uh, guy, Connor Erickson. Okay, cool. And then a module upgrade and bonuses. So we won't get a module or an upgrade, but we will get a bonus of 500 bucks if we don't take any damage, or less than 200. Interesting. All right. Take at least one truck. All right, let's take a look at the vehicles. Uh, this is a list of your vehicles. Different vehicles are better suited for different types of terrain and expeditions. So since we unlock vehicles, all the vehicles that we're going to see now in the garage are probably not all the vehicles in the game. These are just the ones we start with. So there are more vehicles coming. Yeah, so the songs are a banger for sure. <clears throat> I think we should bring this again. The Tuz 16. This one has better power. A 
Okay, so we can put the sideboard on there. Oh, okay. And then we can put in inventory. All right, well, let's let's put on the, the sideboard, because we're supposed to, and it's free. But we do have a flatbed and some other things that are locked. Oh, we can actually bring a workshop with us. Workshop module equipped with all necessary tools required for the expedition allows for the player to fully repair vehicles without recovering to the fob. Add-on requires another add-on to be installed. A lot of things in this game, too, are locked behind progression. So rather than it being just a money-based system where you can buy anything at any time, this one's going to be all about you have to do missions to unlock these things in many cases. It's all story-based, which is interesting. But I don't mind that. All right, that's required for the expedition. We got bolt-on fenders. Some of these are cosmetic, but some of these are actually... They actually help with stuff. Yeah, li literally this is cosmetic, but it also says in the description, provides slight crash protection. You have the Supreme Edition, therefore there's four extra vehicles available marked with SE. Thank you very much, Nicholas. Yeah, Nicholas, feel what... This is your personal chat now, Nicholas, by the way. If you want to share more info about the game, please do. I, I love it when you do that, man. All right, let's keep going. So we're going to put those fenders on then. Let's go. We're going to we're going to look at vehicle customization now for a little bit cuz this is a big part of the game. Like planning all this stuff out in advance, like just picking a vehicle and going, bad mistake. Don't 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 just rush through this screen. You need to plan out for sure. And we'll come back to paint. All right, engine. We got the Laz 6 right now. But there are two other engines that are outstanding. A revised engine variant. Oh, and it tells you exactly what you need to do to get this engine. So you need to complete an unexpected find to unlock. Love that. That it tells you exactly what you need to do. But other ones say explore the region to find it. So some are vague and some are straightforward. So mix of both. Dock suspension. Rock crawler kit. Now we got the stock for now. Oh, we can get better tires. What do we got on now? We have the 47 UAD ones, all terrain. But I think, brother, we should go with these off roads. And we've got $32,000 to start with. Let's go with that. I feel like this truck's really good, too. This feels like a great. This is like the Unimog that I really liked from the Norwegian map from SnowRunner, where it's like, it's part. It feels part scout and part truck at the same time. It does a good job with that. What's up, Gavin? Welcome back, dude. Let's do the extendo winch. An extended length winch set up for trucks. Added rope length may not be as impressive as that of the scout winches, but it helps with crossing more barren areas. And yeah, we're in a desert, so that helps. Engageable diff lock and a snorkel, which will buy the... We got a high mount or a low mount. Uh, we need to complete above normal to unlock the high mount. So we'll go with the low low snorkel for now. Miscellaneous. Ah, roll cage, okay. So all we can get now is the bolt-on fenders and the emergency reserve, which is for fuel. And supply. Yeah, it seems like you can uh, sell things for the full price. So if you buy something and you don't like it, you can sell it and get all your money back at any time, which is cool. So if you buy this roof rack and you're like, why the hell did I buy that? Then you get your money back. But this does give you four extra slots for expedition resources. Ooh, look at that. Oh, that's really interesting. So some things actually do give us an extra slot for certain supplies. So this will give us an extra spare tire. But this also may add weight. Maybe? Reinforced bumper that provides good crash protection comes equipped with a mount for additional resources. Well, this says good crash protection. This says great crash 
crash protection. So this would definitely minimize damage even more. And then there's even sun visors if you want to play in first person. Let's go with that one for now. Rims. And let's go with these ones. We can get a radar, living module. A living compartment for the longest of expeditions allows the player to skip time in game. Interesting. So now we have eight slots to carry stuff, which is kind of cool. And we can get even more if we get that front bumper, but I'm going with a different one for now. Okay, paint jobs. What do we got? We got like a for like a forest on fire. Or we can go with basic paint. Or the default paint job, which is this. I think I'm going to go for olive drab. So, yeah, something like this. So every truck can probably have the whole color spectrum. Oh, this is cool. Wait a minute. These are cool. Oh, yeah. These are looking lit. <laughs> That looks cool. I like that one. Don't know if we want camo, though, for when we break down and a rescue crew needs to come find us, you know what I mean? But I think we'll go with this one. That's cool. And it's free. Okay. Um, oh, it saves all of our settings. Good. We have cargo and inventory. There was one more thing I wanted to change. So if you remove it from your list, it'll it'll bring it back to its defaults. That's interesting to know. So if if you move something from your garage, it'll go back to defaults. Hmm. So that means it may change each time we go on an expedition. All right, we'll do a quick setup again, since we kind of already know what we want. What's up, Boothris? Welcome back, dude. Good to see you. Oh, wait, no. It's got these equipped still, right? No, it didn't give us the extended. So we'll go with the short bed. Rims 2. That bumper. Throw the roof rack on there. What was that rear mounted? Oh, rear mounted rack too. With that last paint job. I wanted to check out interior stuff too. Just to see what else we can do. Oh, there's stickers. Okay. Oh, and none of them are unlocked. Wait, we don't get interior stuff anymore? We can't put like fuzzy dice on the rear view? And no in exterior stickers are unlocked. I beat the game. And this is all I got. All I got was this lousy sticker. All right, get your phones out. Take a screenshot. Had to buy a vehicle twice. No, I'm customizing. I, w I, I guess it 
it sets things back to default if you take it out of your because you have your garage that lists all the vehicles that you have and then there's your expedition like you you take that vehicle out of the garage customize it for the expedition but if you remove it from your expedition list it puts it back into the garage as default we know that too <laughs> look at that literally crawling up a 90 degree cliff These are kind of cool stickers, but you know, like whatever. It, it's whatever. It's fine. <laughs> All right, let's do. Uh, I think this. I don't think there's much else we can customize at the moment. We gotta. We gotta put in some work. All right, that looks good. Okay, so that's truck one. We could bring another vehicle with two. If we want to, we don't have to. Oh, we customized the first one. Oh. So, wait, it did save. My mistake. So, each time that you change it out, it'll it'll be different. But there doesn't seem to be any difference between these two vehicles. And the... The Akaton... The, the difference between these two and the SE is this one seems to have a 20 liter larger tank. I'm glad we did this. This is good because it doesn't... At the moment, it doesn't look like there's any difference between the power, strength, or fuel consumption, but the SE edition has a larger tank. So we can bring both trucks. Okay, so we can remove that from the list. So it will save your settings. But the SE has like a little bit more orange on the, on the grill. But there doesn't seem to be much difference between the two. Okay, let's grab stuff. So they said that we needed to bring the the jack screw. But let's take a look at all the stuff in the inventory. So this is stuff we get to use, like for example, making anchor points to literally crawl up the side of a mountain. So we have the jack screw returns the car to horizontal position can only be used if the car is upside down. Oh. So if you flip completely, this will save you. So it's like a one-time get out of free get out of jail free card. Anchor. Set the anchor on any flat surface to get a new anchor point for the winch. Cannot be returned to inventory. So once you use it, that's it. Range finder. Uh, a geolocating device for determining distance from the observer to the object. Fuel. Additional stock of fuel includes 50 liters. Spare parts. Additional stock of spare parts includes 100 points. Spare wheel. Additional set of spare wheels includes one piece. A light bacon used to mark interesting or safe and delicious places and routes. Oh, okay. So that we can set up routes with. That's good for multiplayer. You can tell your friend, hey man, I'm, I found a good spot that's good to cross the river. I marked it. Nice. Camcorder, professional filming equipment. Camera trap, records footage when the sensors detect movement. Oh, so we'll be able to like track na uh, animal migration and stuff? Like maybe the... Uh, I don't know. National Forest Service will ask us to go out to an area and monitor the bears. Is this game literally going to have bears? Hydro monitoring system tracks and analyzes bodies of water. Radio station. A radio communication of s uh, is a set of equipment necessary to carry out on communication via radio waves. Portable met a meteor station. Install wide open spaces for weather tracking and forecasting. Oh. Does this game have live weather where you could pass through an area and then it could rain and then suddenly that area is going to be super muddy? Mm. Portable rig. More compact version of a normal rig. Something for digging. Okay. What were we required to take for the mission? Oh, we got it. Sideboard and the jack screw. We can bring another vehicle too. Let's bring a stock... Katko Canyon. And just see how that does if we need it. We'll just toss that in there. Alright, nice. Now we can also bring uh, a team with us too. Team members, this is a list of specialists that are available to you. You can hire them to make the expedition easier or get more benefits from it. So we can hire mechanics. Each of them give us 
Okay, this is cool. Now, th this is what makes the game have some more replayability to me. That's cool. Funkhauser, thanks very much, dude, for 30 months as a Raptor Plus member. Big shout out to all you members. Thank you, folks, for smacking that join button. Enjoy all those new emotes and such. Yeah, multiplayer's coming soon. Yeah, this is cool, Harry. I think you're going to really uh, like this one, I think. A lot more planning with this one. All right, so each of these different types of specialists, mechanics, logistics, hydrologists, jaegers, operators, and managers, they all give us different bonuses. So that's cool as hell. So this guy gives us like five more anchors or 30% less truck damage, more armor, more repair points, and better fuel consumption. We can get airdrops from this guy. 50 more liters of fuel. Binoculars. More fuel at the outposts. More truck repair points. Oh, hydrologists can help with river crossings. So echo sounding. I, I, I love the fact that we're out like discovering unexplored territory or something. Like that's really cool. It feels like we're on a different planet in a way. It's gonna be interesting. Uh, more, more stuff for the echo sounder, more for the engine. Wait a minute. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hold on. Anwar allows us to have 100% reduced underwater damage. This dude literally lets our vehicle be a submarine. That literally means you will take no damage at all whatsoever from just driving underwater in a river. Is that what that means? Albino polar bear with the 68 months as a bear cub. Next month's going to be a, a good month. It's going to be my birthday. And you hit your 69th month. Nice. All right, Jaegers. Oh, mark, mark shortcuts on binoculars or drone. Oh. Oh, look at this. Mitch Goodman here with the... Uh, 10 meter extra length and power on the winch. Let's go. That guy's my best friend. Hell yeah. But in cor of course, in order to unlock these people, we need to uh, complete missions. So that's actually really cool. So it's not just so much about your uh, vehicle. Sometimes it's going to be about your specialist too. Like 10 extra meters and 30% more power on the winch. You, you can literally climb the side of mountains. Wow. Operators. Oh, the dr Oh! This operator allows the drone to trade and increases his range. No way. So that means this guy can literally... This guy can literally have you go, like, fly to a... Like, if, you, if your vehicle runs out of fuel, you can deploy the drone, fly to a nearby camp, pick up some jerry cans, and fly the jerry cans back that's cool as hell that means the drone can actually drop like pick up cargo and stuff or you can complete a mission without getting so close to it and it'll save some fuel you get within i think the, the it's already a 50 meter radius for the drone so that means you could fly 100 meters which is cool because like if if it's at the top of a cliff you just send the drone up to the top of the cliff right that's awesome like, you don't have to drive all the way up there. I'm, I'm just saying that opens so many possibilities to, like, getting around having to drive up there. Oh, wow. And this person's got the extendo range, too. Wow. Well, we can assign a manager, David Simmons. Gives us 50% more on selling prices. I guess we get money for delivering stuff. Yeah, that's really cool. Uh, this person gives us a free evacuation, which I think is recovering to base. All right. Well, let's go with uh, David. David is now our uh, manager. Cool. All right, and let's start with our Tuz, but both will be available. Yeah, that was Gus from Breaking Bad. That's right. Gustavo Fring is in the game. Confirmed. 
All right, get to the crossroads. So how do we change vehicles? Ah, if we go to the map, okay. Oh, yep, just like uh, SnowRunner 2. Expedition, contracts, tasks, objects. David's probably sitting in the base all cozy in the air conditioning. That's where I'd be. Okay, so we've equipped the SE, which apparently has more fuel capacity than that other vehicle. We'll see if we can eventually upgrade this thing. Alright, uh, let's go. In expeditions, you'll need to navigate the terrain. Use the mini-map for this. We're going down there. Down to the old river. Or what's left of it. Also, I noticed a helipad. That That's interesting. Uh, get to the pond and examine the echo sounder. Oh, we're unlocking our first device. Hell yeah, brother. I uh, use the echo sounder to determine the depth of water bodies you're about to cross. Ah, we got the winch, the binoculars, the drone, and the echo sounder. The device can be a uh, can gauge the depth of ponds and fords, as well as scan the bottom. Oh, so if something gets lost in the water, we can use it? Alright, so we know where it's safe to cross. How does it work when we're, like, on the ground? Do we have to be in the water to use it? No. Pick up the item radio station. Find a suitable location and launch the drone. Explore the nearby mountain using the drone. Oh, cool. Ah, uh, this will be cool so you can watch friends, by the way. If somebody's about to tip over, you can, like, leave your truck and go watch them in co-op later. Alright, so that's where we're needing to go, so we gotta go around. Uh, visit the top of the mountain with the drone. I need to get a little closer, I think. Drone has a little bit of a limited range. Well, oh, it's forcing me to use the drone. Oh, now I can get closer. I don't, I don't think before it let me. Oh yeah, now it's pulling me back to the truck. Okay, we're supposed to cross on that side. That was close.
Now use the winch to get your vehicle out of trouble. Attach it to natural elements or your own anchors and pull. Trees are common and useful winch points. Be careful they can break. Press Y to attach the winch. Oh, there's a dead tree over there. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, did you see that? There's an option to not only pull with the winch, but to push, which means you can, uh, you can actually give yourself some slack. You don't always have to constantly pull or hold. You can actually, like, give some slack to the, to the winch, too, which is cool. Then you get a running start at something and then pull. You can also find the winch in the device's menu. Got it. Enter delivery mode. Sometimes in expeditions you have to complete a quest, item deliveries, or complete structure construction. Deliver the radio station. Oh, there it is. Alright, now we can pick up the big game. Stage complete. Binoculars are a great way to explore the map and find useful places or convenient paths for the vehicle to pass. Open the mini-map. Explore the area. Oh, they want us to look over there. Oh, there's an airdrop. I don't know why it shows a bone. That's a little weird. Alright, let's go to binoculars. You've discovered a new airdrop. Alright, cool. Look around with the drone. Not sure what we're looking for. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, there's another airdrop. Ah, oh, the drone thing is cool. Oh, we were exploring the area. Okay, we almost were done. Using a drone, you can also discover unexplored parts of the map. We just need to explore a little bit more. Well, we found this airdrop.
Do we gotta get that percentage to fill up to 100 by just flying around and looking at the ground? So it's kind of like in Dying Light when you have to use binoculars to find missions. Uh, yeah. And same with the drone, I guess. Apparently there's shortcuts that could be marked, too. If that marked a shortcut, but I think we went through that way to get here. Anyway, it's telling us to explore the area, but I don't know... There's no real cl clear indicator of what we've not looked at or what we should look at. Maybe I'll fly through here. Hmm. Let's see on the mini map. Yeah, we're exploring the right area. What is that anyway? It's like a jack and then two bones. Wait, apparently there's an airdrop there? We drove past that. I didn't see no airdrop there. I think that might not be right. Because there's one there. And one there. But not there. Fossils? Yeah, they've shown fossils in the game. Oh, now it says 98%. I don't even know what I did to get it to from 95 to 98. Oh, they want us to use the drone. Oh, was there fossils you saw on the drone? Oh, okay. No, I, was, I was probably looking at the percentage thing to see if it was going up while I was flying. Oh, there we go. All right, I... That's going to be confusing, that part of the game, where it's like, explore the area. It's like, I don't, if you fly up and do 360, I mean, what else is there to do? Like, zoom in and see if a rock looks like a rock? I don't, I don't know. Uh, recover to the base and park the truck. At any time during the expedition, you can recover your vehicle to the field base. Open the mini-map. Uh, choose the field base and then recovery. Where is that? Or we can skip we can skip time with the left trigger, so I don't know why they gave us that whole skip time thing as a track a trailer uh, device when we can just do it in the game. Field operation base, truck recovery is free. Right. We'll cover to the base and park the truck. Hell yeah, brother! And we took less than 200 damage. And we unlocked a new truck, I think. The Don 71. Which I thought we had before. But that must be because we had the Supreme Edition. Alright, cool. We've got 2,000 bucks plus 500 plus the Don 71. And the Eastern Outpost has been unlocked. Cool. Back to the headquarters. Oh, now everything's all unlocked. Pretty. Hmm. So now we've got Arizona and the Carpathians unlocked too. But I think these maps are different. Yeah, okay. So in Arizona we can explore the Grand Canyon and here's all the uh, missions that we can do including one to defeat Bradford in battle. And then there's the this desert map. bay map and probably another desert oh cool with a big old lake all right so that one has four maps so you can go to arizona that has four maps within it then carpathians which has like a swamp map an island 
in the middle of a river. Several small rivers and a big old mountain. And then some lakes and... Oh, it's a dormant vol volcano. Ooh. So some beautiful lakes there, too. All right. So we've unlocked all of this. But we can go to the Carpathians, though. So we've seen the desert, which is new and looks great in the game. But we can go here to the prologue in Apex Europe. I think Little Colorado maybe is just a tutorial area. And it'll get us a bunch of money and free equipment, I think, maybe. We'll probably unlock some new stuff. But let's go to the Carpathians real quick and see what the uh, what that looks like. Let's go to Prologue under Apex Europe. Uh, Prologue Apex Europe. We dropped some important equipment nearby. Never mind what dropped means. It's just a small logistical miscalculation. It should take you all of 20 minutes if you hustle. Oh, okay. So we'll get 3500 bucks prepayment. Oh, that's nice. The prepayment's nice because then we can actually buy some equipment for our trucks. Uh, payment, 4800 bucks, and then we might get a new specialist. Oh, we do. Oh, and we get Anwar. If we complete this mission, we can make a submarine. All right. Submarine. All right, let's go. We're going to bring the SE with us again. I think this is all we're going to need. Yeah. I mean, maybe I'll bring that. Oh, Con oh yeah, we unlock Connor. So he gives us more binocular range and marks up hills and downhills. Okay. So he'll mark points of interest for for us where it might be easier to cross. And let's bring what was his name? David. Alright. I think we're good to go. We need to bring anchors, too. Oh, okay. So it marks things with an exclamation point, too, that are required for the mission. All right, let's go. All right, so now we're in the Carpathians map. That'll be interesting. Cool. Ooh, that's pretty. Oh, do they have deployable bridges? That would be badass if we could bring a little bridge along with us and then deploy it. That's awesome. Nighttime all over again. Let's see if we can actually skip time. Oh, there we go. Well, that was easy. I want to play in daytime all the time. That last map, it was getting dark. But daytime is what we want to see. Alright, visit the base exit. And I think we can actually go over to these little things and refuel. Yeah, like right here. Man, I'm liking this music. I gotta, I'm gonna... Let me turn down a few things. Music in, in these, um, in, in SnowRunner, the music is outstanding. So I expect the same here. I love the music in these games, really. Go to the viewpoint. So, since uh, the game does tell you the time in which it takes you to complete a mission, there might be possibly uh, a thing in the future 
for missions that are timed. Well, we could just use the drone and scout out the route. Well, that's easy. Okay. Stay on the road. What's up, Aztec? Hi, everybody. Welcome aboard. Certainly looks like snow runner to me. In many ways. Uh, looks like we need to head there, but we need to verify the handling first. Use the binoculars to look around. Okay. Oh, dude, we get money just for looking around. Okay, I like that. I like the fact that if you scout around, you get a reward for it. Because, like, I don't know, to just use the binoculars itself is kind of like, you know... Oh, look at this. You can make like an extra thousand bucks just by stopping and like doing a 360 with the binoculars. You do that on every map, that's like 10,000 free bucks. Well, that's a pretty good reward. Alright. Or more, depending on what you find. Alright, I like that though. Yeah, this is a spin-off game from the same folks who made Mud Runner and Spin uh, in uh, Snow Runner, Mud Runner and Snow Runner, which of course was in inspired by spin tires. But driving up a mountain always has a high risk of overturning the car. Lower the tire pressure for better grip. Oh my God. We're going to climb our first mountain. No way. <laughs> All right. Wait, whoa, 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 whoa. Trying to hit the button like it was Snow Runner. That threw me off. I was hitting the button like it was Snow Runner. Oh, that's great. Please don't break. Please don't break. <laughs> that was awesome. Alright, I don't know if the winch was as necessary there as just throwing it into... Probably all-wheel drive, uh, diff lock on low is probably enough. 
with a little, well, at least on that climb. <sighs> that was close. Pick up the supplies. Uh, let's see. Quartz, supplies, and scrap metal. Oh, do we get money for returning this stuff? One of the minerals that can be found on Earth's crust, valued by traders. Oh! So we can get extra money from finding resources, too, and selling it back? That's the purpose of having David with you, is that he can sell that stuff for a higher price. He's a negotiator. Nice. We can take fuel with us if we need. Oh, okay, we can add fuel to our truck. Nice. And repair, but... Oh, no, we're adding we're adding parts to our inventory if we want to. Oh, and you can see the truck getting more full. So the, the tarp actually... With the more stuff that we're carrying, it's getting more full. I wonder if we could sell this stuff. It'd be really interesting if we could bring the spare parts back down and be like, Hey, I'll sell these to you. That's cool. Alright, now it's time to go back down again. Wait. Explore the area. Which area? Over there. So we already explored some of that area from before when I was like trying to find a way through there. I, it's so vague on what it means by explore. Like I don't know how close we, I, I don't know what counts as exploration, you know? I don't get it. We'll have to learn. Absolute madman. Wow. Ah, we made it. Alright, normal tire pressure again. Wow. That was crazy. Look at the pretty flowers. They did a good job with the environments. They always do. Great music, wow. Okay. So we're supposed to explore this area. It's at 82%, now 84, 87. I really don't know. I mean, I think you should just go to the center of the area and just do a 360. Does that, does that work? It just makes you dizzy. 93%. I don't even know what I'm doing to get this done. What about the binoculars? 
Yeah, that part's confusing to me. That 96 now. Deliver the cargo back to base. Alright, we made it. So now do I get to keep the uh, quartz and then sell it to somebody else or do we have to find that person on the map and sell it? I'm not sure exactly. Oh, there it is. Item sold, 39.50. You know what would be nice here too is to see what extra money David gives us. So it should say like you know, it should say like 3,500 and then plus, you know, or whatever, whatever percent David may have given us, whatever the, the number he's supposed to give. Be nice. All right, so that was that mission done. Brother, yeah. All right, we can go back to a uh, little Colorado now, or maybe Arizona. Those all seem locked. Well, let's hundred percent little Colorado then. Uh, nearby area, not far from the training base. We left valuable cargo. Use the metal detectors to search for objects. Oh, we get to use new equipment now. Let's go. All right. Recover the truck less than two times, lol. Now what truck can haul the, uh, oh they want us to bring this one. Or the Don 71. Or the Lodestar. Oh, let's bring this thing. Or we go to the truck store. Ooh. Lodestar SE. So here's more vehicles in the game. Some of which we already own, but we can buy them again. Ah, here's some locked vehicles too. Damn. Bro, that's a bank truck. That's where you transfer money from the bank from. Oh my god. The van from Contraband Police. Oh, the bandit returns. Little rollover. 
Tatra Force. And that's just the, uh... Wait, is there a way to sort? Oh, there's a sorting system. I think that's all. Then here's your scouts, your heavies, and your off-roads. Yep. So scout, heavy, and off-road vehicle. So this is the heaviest vehicle in the game, the Tetra Force. All right, so we can buy more of those in the future. So let's bring... Uh, I want to bring the classic Don. Let's just bring the, not the SE, let's just bring the classic. Don 71 has a dino paint job. Oh, the best car in the game. Cool. Well, let's check it out. We don't need to bring anything. Let's customize. Oh, new gearbox. We got, we got the fine tune. Doesn't seem to change anything. Specialized gearbox with a manual mode for lower gears. Oh. Provides good off-road performance at the expense of strength and fuel efficiency. Ooh. That brings the power down to C+. Fuel consumption, though, is an S rating. Throw those OS's on there. Stendo. Oh, the roof rack has to have the... Okay. The metal detector is that thing. The carbon fiber thing. Small metal detector that allows to scan surrounding area zones. Four zones useful... With useful resources in close proximity. Mm-hmm. Yeah, those look, look fine to me. External roll cage... Emergency reserve of fuel. Hmm. Let's go with the roll cage. That looks cool. Paint jobs. Best game. Game of the year. So each vehicle seems to come with a special paint job and then like a, a pattern that then has multiple colors. Hmm. That's interesting. Let's go with the dinosaur. Dinosaur? Dino Nugs? Look where you are going. A little dirt never hurt. Trust me, I am an engineer. <sighs> mm -hmm. Max water level. Well, yeah, if you're friends with Anwar, you can. this is literally what you can do. You just go up river. I want to believe. Wow. All right. Um, we'll go with that one. So wait, there's various things we can add that also add. No. Okay. All right, we'll go with this one. Low roller. Why does it say zero to three? Oh, we have extra inventory too. Bring anchors. I 
can bring extra fuel. We're going to have to be careful in this game too because our inventory costs us money. So if we have multiple trucks with multiple things in the inventory, that's extra money on top of it. So It was a D-pad dad. Game looks cool so far. Uh, we're only in the beginning early stages, so it's kind of restricted to what we're doing because they're trying to teach us new stuff, but eventually I think it'll open up more. Oh. Anwar. David. Oh, who, where was Eric? There it is. O'Connor. Erickson. All right, let's go. Looks like a few things we need to explore. We get money for doing that, so like literally pulling out the binoculars and looking around get, gets us cash. Good morning. Those airdrops that we found before, maybe we can go to those at any time. Yeah, they're still there from before. So if we get there, oh, that's what that is, fossils. Okay, so we bring that back for money. Gold mining, what the hell? All right, cool. So I guess during any mission or maybe during the open world exploration, you can go there to get extra money, which is cool. I, I like the fact that we can go there at any time we want. That's neat. Oh, there's a there's a truck down there. How does that work? Hmm. Well, we'll we'll work with that later. Looks like a lot of free vehicles and a lot of free money in this kind of like tutorial zone. So we can build essential storage here. Nice. So this isn't the specified area. These are just for building like extra camp points. They want us to go down there. lifted kit for. Oh, this is going to be hard mode. Uh, looks like we can cross there, maybe? Oh, this is so cool, though, that there's, like, gold on the maps. 
Or we could go down to this truck and see what that's all about. Let's do that. Maybe this will unlock a new vehicle or a free vehicle. And then we can head towards... that away. Yeah. Snow, Snow Run is really weird about the damage, too, where it's like you could be driving at top speed and hit a rock and be thrown around and take no damage. But then as you're braking to try to come to a stop, slide into the guardrail a little bit and then just, like, blow out all your tires. <laughs> it's like, what the hell? No damage from the rock that I hit in the middle of the street, but um, 10 million damage for bumping into the guardrail. Little badass car. This one we're going to want to keep all-wheel drive off unless we need it. I think it burns through fuel. Alright, lifted suspension is a must. So do we get anything for this now? Maybe it's a mission for a different... Maybe this will be a mission for a different campaign or something, like a different like it's here, but we don't we're not assigned to this task yet. Um Looks like something we need to do later. does not like mud. Seemed like there was only one type of mud tires for this one too. We, we, ain't, we ain't got them. Gotta unlock those. Let's try that low gear. top. What does this do? Oh, it's to turn on and off the engine. I don't know why they put that in. Uh, it's kind of more of a thing to turn off the engine, really. It's like you can turn on the engine by just hitting, um, you know, the gas. T-Rex enclosure? Yeah, we're on a... Well, that's got to be one of the first mods, is that... What Jeep was that from uh, Jurassic Park? Like a 93... Well, they had the Ford Explorers in there, but they, they had those Jeeps that the, uh, the staff used. Those are badass. We 
we got to stay out of the water with this guy. He doesn't stand a chance in the water. Tires might be everything in this one. Was that the bush chat was hiding in? You know what would be cool? As if this game had Twitch drops for uh, paint jobs and stuff. That'd be cool. Yay, we did it. Alright, cool. Alright, nice. So now, we'll just sneak up here. Demon King, 28 months as a raptor egg. Thanks for the support, man. Thanks for being a member. It's a long time. So we're out. We're going to go see what it's like to do gold mining in this game. Apparently we can gold mine. And... Oh, boy. Oh, this card does not stand a chance. We're dead. We're, we're so dead. Goodbye, cruel world. At least we got money for that. She made it. Wow. Wow. It did it. Uh, let's lower our tire pressure. Well, we could try out making an anchor ourselves. Send it. Okay, so she has no problems with rivers, but rocks are just... We're going to have to get a, a different uh, suspension kit. Which we had the option for, but, but you know. 
Uh, the game will have multiplayer, yeah. It's confirmed that it's it is a it is a multiplayer game, just not at launch. Which is fine. Go play single player and experience it for yourself, and then later on when friends are like, "Oh, dude, this just got multiplayer. Is it worth it?" You'd be like, "Oh yeah, I love this gamer." Eh, not really. It depends on what you feel. I don't know how long until multiplayer comes along, but hopefully it'll provide like a new update with like more multiplayer-centered maps and stuff. Because some of these missions, I don't really think you need multiple people for. Like some of these missions are go to this place, pick up this thing, and then bring this thing back. It's like, why do you need two people? Is the damage touchy like uh, Mudrunner? Thank you very much, CF, for the five. Uh, yes and no. I haven't really taken much damage in this game at all, except for this vehicle. And I have a stock suspension on it, so I'm banging on rocks a lot. So I'm taking damage from that, but I'm going to have to play it a bit more to really get a feel for it, I think. Because every vehicle's different, all the options are different, so I think we got a way to go to figure out how we truly feel about it, but it's cool so far. Scrap metal. Dinosaur bones. Part of a museum skeleton. Dinosaur skeleton. Valuable to the museum. Oh, we'll get money for that. Oh, we've already got anchors, so that's cool. Is that with the cops now? Okay, now what sucks about the airdrops is that they actually... We have limited inventory, so we could go down to this gold mine here, but we would probably have to transport the gold. So that sucks. And then we have to go climb again. We can deploy the drone. Let's see if we can fuel up too. I love that we can not only. Um, winch in this game but also like let out the winch like we can give a little bit of slack so that way if you want to go down a hill you could winch your bumper to a tree and then kind of slowly lower yourself down a hill you know you could have the winch control the speed which is cool I like that Let's use the drone then to look around. Because there's something down here. It showed like a question mark. Remember to activate gold mining contract if you go to the mine. Really? There's a contract for that? Oh, you're right. Head to the mine. Oh, okay. Journey to the abandoned mine is a chance to peer into history of the region. Amid the darkness of the old tunnels, answers to the questions are hidden. What riches did the land bring to the miners of the past? I feel like we're going to have to uh, bring something back. Ancient remains. Oh, there's a dinosaur over there. An altar. Alright, so we can go visit all those things. Cool. So yeah, thanks for the 66 months. Count me in on this when multiplayer kicks off. Yeah, I don't know when multiplayer will be, but just not at launch. So I guess technically this is an early access game. But 
on the other hand, I've seen plenty of single player games that they're like, nope, this game's only going to be single player. And then eventually they just add multiplayer. They're like, hey, we're multiplayer now. It's like, oh, oh wow. So wait, there was a question mark here. Like, what is that? Is that the hill we're about to go down? I tried to scan this. Like, this is just a climbable spot. Multiplayer will be several months for a free update. Alright, fair. I mean, I'm trying to do all the scouting like they told us, but I just... Well, let me scout. Alright, let's just drive there then. Is Mudrunner better than SnowRunner? Um, no. Mudrunner was like the first sequel to Spin Tires. Like, it, it really was like, hey, Spin Tires is cool. Let's put a lot of money into it and see what we can actually make out of it. Maybe people will like it, maybe they won't. And they loved it. And they were like, well, damn. Now what do we do? People really like this. All right, well, we'll do some, like, you know, DLCs and stuff and see what people like. And they loved it. And then they were like, well, people really want us to make, like, snowy environments. Let's make SnowRunner. Cool. And then they did it. SnowRunner was really cool. But through all the DLCs of SnowRunner, it's quite apparent that they kind of are bored of the snow. Like, there's not too many snow maps in SnowRunner anymore that are just solely snow. So they decided to make this. This is just a different franchise. Don't think of this as SnowRunner 2 or MudRunner 2 uh, or a full... This doesn't even feel like a full game on its own. It feels like a... Um, I don't know how to I don't know how to explain it, but it's not it's it's a lot of Mud Runner and Snow Runner in a new game that's more Mud Runner because they don't have snow in it. That kind of thing. Now uh, this is out on April fifth, uh, March fifth, March fifth. Okay, so I don't know why I, I don't know what's here. It says climb, but it still shows a question mark. Shouldn't it show the symbol that shows a vehicle going uphill? Alright, whatever. How do I zoom in? Oh, there we go. I don't know. A lot of things on the map that are question marks that I feel like should change to a different symbol when I explore it, or literally use it. Anyway, Nicholas, are you in the chat? Our good friend Nicholas may have a lot of answers for it. He spends a lot of time in the SnowRunner slash MudRunner Discord. You guys might want to ask Nicholas some questions. This man has the intel. All right, let's activate the mine quest. You're still here? Okay. Now, there's a lot of good questions coming in. Some of which I don't have answers for. Like if it has manual shifter support. That I don't know. Find traces of gold mining. I don't know. I, I would imagine that this giant mine with the train tracks coming out of it... And all the uh, sleuthing equipment, or whatever they call that. I'm, I'm pretty sure there's a good sign of gold mining right here. I mean, I'm no detective, but... I think this abandoned gold mine is a pretty good sign of an abandoned gold mine. Look, I'm a fan of this game, but Nicholas is like... Nicholas was born to uh, snow run and mud run, okay? Find traces of gold mining, I mean... Oh. <laughs> what do they mean? Find traces of gold bar. I, what?
binoculars to register it, maybe. Well, this, this, this stream is good because when I'm confused and we don't know what the hell we're doing and then we figure something out, then when you guys play, if you want to play, or the info will be out there on like what, when the mission find traces of gold mining pop pops up, what does that mean? Well, it clearly doesn't mean go to the gold mine. Oh boy. Hold on, we gotta climb. Use the metal detector maybe? Oh. Dude, you might be right. But where do I use it though? Wait a minute. Hold on. Now there's a dollar sign across the river? No, that's up there. What is that? What the f- What? Wait, what? Hold, hold on. This mission is to go to the gold mine that's abandoned here to then go to somewhere else. Oh my god. Dude, this is totally SnowRunner. This is, this is the same crap they have you do, too. Go to this abandoned mine to then be told to go somewhere else completely to then find traces of gold mining. What does that mean? Do you want me to look for... Like, just tell, just be direct. Go, go here and search for... Like, use the metal detector for ser to search for gold. Just be direct. This is not Indiana Jones. Ah, Dr. Jones, I see you have an off-road vehicle. Fantastic. You'll never find out my secret plan. Find traces of gold mining. Good luck, Dr. Jones. What the hell? I'm just trying to drive. This is a driving game, not a puzzle game. God. Golden van down by the river. Now, but some some things irritate me about the uh, the binocular system and the drone system, like when it says to explore. Oh well, we'll talk more about that later. Like we'll figure that stuff out. Should we try to make our own anchor to get up there. Maybe we don't have to. Also, let's uh, lower tire pressure a little bit. Oh, hell yeah, brother. Wow, screw the winch. What happens if I lower it even more? Do you have any, any better effect on it? Okay, let's see how we use a anchor point. I want, I want to test it out. They haven't told us yet. How do I make my own point? Ah. All right, this is kind of weird and delayed. Look at that. That looks a little, that looks a little awkward. But that'll do. Okay, that's still badass, though, that we can make our own winch points. Look at that. Oh, that's great. That's great. Love it. <laughs> that's cool. All right, that's really cool. That was nice. That was legit. Cool. Sweet. Oh, there's just some fuel here. Nice. So now, another thing that would be helpful is for these drop... For these um, airdrops, if it shows you what's in there. Which it does. But it doesn't show you what's there for fuel or spare parts. 
So if you were nearby and really low on fuel, what's to tell you what's there for fuel or spare parts? It's like if I'm low fuel and I'm here, I could try to make it back to the base, maybe, but why not fuel up? But going going to the drop pod or the airdrop could um, cost us fuel rather than saving us fuel, you know what I mean, or earning it. Can we recover the anchors? We cannot. They do make it clear that you cannot do that. But there are uh, specialists who will give us... Um, who will give us... Um, like more anchors and stuff like that. Okay, so yeah, immediate suggestions. Like if you're gonna tell us that there's an airdrop there and it can give us stuff, you gotta tell us what it can give us. Cause this is an airdrop too, right? No, this is a resource zone. Wait, isn't that an airdrop though? I'm pretty sure this was an airdrop before we got here. Yeah, I, w I was fairly certain. I mean, we get money for looking around, so you may as well. Also, I was never able to get the money for that one climb we went down. Alright. Now let's uh, change time. There we go. Oh, that's nice. Th that's all I ever wanted from SnowRunner 2 was just, or any of these runner games. Just let me make it the time of day that I want. Like, I know it makes it more challenging to drive at night and stuff, but sometimes you just, you just want to drive all day or all night. Yeah, so that was that little airdrop we were just at. So what is this? That's the climb we tried to go down before. I keep trying to look at this with the binoculars to get money for it, but it won't let me. I want the money! Okay, so if... Here's something that needs to happen. If we've discovered these, two things should happen. One, it shouldn't be a question mark anymore. So that way we can clearly see on the map what it is without having to zoom in on each question mark. And two, to let us know that we've already looked at it with the binoculars so we have already got our money. That's confusing. Leaving that as a question mark but telling us what it is leads to too many questions. Like, what is that? Why is it still of a question mark? Have I scanned that with my binoculars? Do I get the money for that yet? Like, it's a little... To put a bunch of question marks on the map and then look at them and then not have them change to what they are is confusing. I received 100 when I went up it, yeah. But it's still the question mark, so like I don't remember. I mean, imagine, you know, between all the maps there are in the game, everybody's gonna forget where they went if it's all just question marks. Yeah, we might get the money after the mission, yeah. That might add to our total. I don't know. I haven't been paying attention. How do we switch to repair parts? Oh, there we go. Okay, let's do the main mission, though, while we're here. Because we can go do the gold mining stuff later with a different vehicle. Let's just go back to base. All right, we're going to do main story stuff now. Brother, yeah. Yeah, we'll figure it out. But honestly, in these games, it shouldn't it shouldn't really have to figure it out. It should just be pretty straightforward. You look at something on the map with your binoculars, then you should know what's there. We're not playing Nancy Drew Off-Road Sim. Or Sherlock Holmes Runner.
Hell yeah, brother. <laughs> Love it. Now that's wondering, uh, one thing I'm wondering is in multiplayer if uh, I hope that other players will be able to use your winch points because if you're the if you're the one in the front of the team and you're leading a you know a two-man convoy through an area if you put down a witch point your friend should be able to use it there better not be any dumb shenanigans like that where other people can't see your headlights or something mud runner I think that was a thing Are the red and blue lights moving on the top of the car? Oh, maybe. I haven't been paying attention to that, but that could indicate where metals are or something, yeah. Right now, we're just going to where they told us. I'm just trying to get back to base. So it looks like there are some things that you can do. There's like a main mission that takes you, puts you into and takes you out of the game a few times, which is cool. Because then you go back and you can respec uh, the, the specialists and pick and choose cars a little bit better. Why don't I just find a, a new Ford now when we already scouted this out with the drone? That's how we knew this airdrop was here. So many inconsistencies. Oh, we fall down. Nope, we good. Alright, cool. And we're fine. All right, then. Don't know what happened there. I also wonder if we take fuel from this, does it lower the fuel for the rest of the run? Also, can we stack items? No, you have to take them one at a time. All right, so going to airdrops might be better for... You know what be interesting, too, is if we could go to an airdrop far away, bring the items down to, like, an area like this, drop it off, and then come and pick up a bunch of... Like, use this as a station to go get a bunch of items from other harder-to-get locations and then come back here with a very powerful truck to carry them all. You know what I mean? Rather than having to take multiple trips to the main base, we just go to, like, a... Something like this. Uh, we're stuck. Yo, Lucky Mexican. Thank you very much, dude, for the 48 months. Hello, greetings from Ch Chicago. Finally back home after many many years. Welcome home, dude. Welcome home. Good to see you back in the chat, man. 48 months. That's crazy, dude. Thank you. I'm going to try to go across the other side. There we go. rock there or something? Oh yeah, there is. Okay. I should have known. Now we gotta fight against the water. 
All right, well, there's a crossing behind us. We'll just use that one instead. This car is not strong enough. Or we could go up there. It does look like we can get back down. Okay, we're good. Hell yeah, brother. These are not anchors. These are shenanigan deleters. Whenever there's shenanigans, they'll just delete it. Shenanigan deleted. All right, we did it. Shenanigan eliminated. Yeah, see, the symbol should change to something like that whenever there's a some sort of a crossing or something we find. You know what we haven't done yet? We haven't even looked inside this car. How many cup holders do we have? Oh, look at that. The stick shift is uh, it's uh, vibrating. Cool. Oh, that's a nice car. I'd drive this. This is cool. Yeah, so there's lights there above the rear view mirror, so that could be, um, you know, the red, blue, white. Those could indicate where metals are or something like that. Something like that. Can you use eye tracker? That's a good question. I think the Steam store page may have that listed too. I didn't even think about that, man. I'm going to have to check the Steam store page. That's cool. All right, we're back in safe territory again. Uh, let's check the um, echo sounder. We re re really don't get a lot of range here. I hit, a, I, <laughs> I hit a tire.
leaving all this junk around the base. Alright, uh, if the indicators on the metal detector turn white, it means that there are objects to search within a radius of, a two, of 200 meters. A metal detector gives you information about the location range of objects. Red is resources, blue is items, and green is upgrades. Hmm. This is more of a mini radar. <laughs> what? That's cool. There's an upgrade nearby. Behind the garage. Oh, this is cool. I like how they made the AC units on the uh, building look like a drone. Clever. So there should be upgrades back here? Or? Oh, li literally right there. Okay. So what, do we have to go dig those up or something? Now I've done it. I have a feeling they're further than 200 meters away. for I want upgrades baby yeah every time I scan it keeps getting further and further away what's it say on the map oh okay these are search areas Oh, there's a new thing. Uh, beautiful views. Or is that a... Either that's a POI or a task. I think that might be something we can interact with. Oh, there's, there's lots of it to explore and discover. It's not so empty anymore. Like, it looks like an empty world, but there's lots... A first glance... Seems empty. But with all these devices, with all this treasure and lore. Yeah, there we go. All right, high range upgrade. Item can be equipped in the garage customization uh, menu not available for current truck okay find your first upgrade stash all right that was cool i did like that oh it came from this like destroyed jeep 
Oh wait, this is a car from like the 20s. All right. There we go, brother. Okay, so it did mark the other symbols on the map, so we could just go to like the center of this one. And there's two things over there, the beautiful view and then something else. And let's make it daytime. Or morning. Dobrerano chat. Lo morgon. Good morning. Jesus. That wasn't even that big of a... Well, that was an incline. How, how do you take damage on that? It was 90 degrees. Crazy. Okay, we're going to have to get that, uh, now wait a minute, did the stats of the car change because we took damage? It did. Oh, that's interesting. So because the engine is now at 48%, it changes the parameters of the vehicle. That's interesting. Something to consider. Additionally, I wonder if we can return to, can we like go back and customize further or... We can trade. Oh, that's how we drop off bones and stuff. Okay. Okay. All right, we can at least refuel and repair, but we can't customize and change. So that might be a good reason to bring several vehicles of the same type, but with different modifications. So if you really like this Don 71, you can bring a couple of them with different changes. Oh, it's a task. Uh, near the camp, apparently there are picturesque panoramas. Let's explore them together to discover these magnificent places. Okay. I shouldn't have followed. Go up there and get money. Let's use our metal detector. Uh, oh, there's a little blue thing up there. See, what's interesting here is that it may have been hard to see that blue thing, so I feel like we should be able to use the drone... Well, okay, you could do this and then use the drone to see where it is if you're in the area. So go to the center of the circle, scan, use the drone to see where it is, and then go to it. Josh, thanks for the 10 months, dude. Goob, morning raptors, love you guys. Good morning to you too, dude. Welcome. Do you think some of the features or mechanics of this game will be transferred to Munrunner or Snowrunner? No, because they want you to buy the new thing. I, unless, unless it's going to be a DLC, they could certainly add a vehicle or vehicles that have uh, special tires that can be inflated or deflated but I think they would rather have you buy the f a full new game oh this is another airdrop fuel that's what's annoying to me is that 
An airdrop should tell you what's in there. No matter what it is, you should get a 100% accurate reading of what's in an airdrop to whether, know whether or not it's useful to go there. All I'm saying. Okay, so we got to go back to that other quest. Yeah, that's the last thing we gotta do. Where's the fun in that? Well, for, you know, completionists who want to know... Because, I mean, it does show you if there's stuff you can sell in there. But for the survival purpose of, like, oh, damn, I'm low fuel. Oh, there's an airdrop near me. Is it worth it to go over there and get fuel? I'm just talking about, like, consistency, that's all. Which was my annoyance with the world map where it shows just question marks all over. I, I know I'm complaining, but I think there's a point of improvement there. For example, with the map where if you discover something, it shouldn't remain a question mark. All I'm saying. Do you lose the airdrop if there's no room in your truck? No, you can come back later to get it. And so that's why I'm hoping we can pick up stuff with one vehicle and drop it off somewhere else later. Because if you're doing a mission that requires you to go there... Hell yeah, brother, yeah. Recover less than two times at next to a thousand bucks. All right. Wow, it took like an hour. Mostly because I took the sidetrack to get completely stunlocked by that gold mining quest. But regardless, when you complete the like the storyline for an area, it then unlocks free roam at the top there. So then we can go and get all the... Anything that we miss or want to do, we can just, you know, do whatever we want. Earthy Vibes. We need to conduct a seismic survey of the surrounding area. You'll need a heavy truck with a seismic vibrator. Nice. Installed. Equipment like this greatly increases the weight of the truck, so make sure you purchase all the necessary upgrades. Well, thank you for the tip. That's how, That's helpful. All right. Ah, only these. Oh, I, I like how they indicate the trucks that you can use. It's like, hey, there's a main objective here, and these are the only ones that can do the main objective. Nice. Out of my experience, the Lada, <laughs> the Lada should use more fuel than it does. Oh yeah. Well, we went through like. Uh, I feel like 200 li at least 200 liters of fuel there. Which one should we use? Let's use that one. What's up, Stabbing Joe? Raptor, you're the son I really wanted. Well, here's, here's, here's some more. Yeah, I don't have to go outside, chat. The light comes to me on occasion. Now, wait a minute. This truck has an A- minus power rating. What else is there? What's got the best power rating? The Lodestar 1700. But I don't think that one can haul the equipment, no. I will right, we'll just go with this one then. Ooh. 
Oh, weird. Oh, that's kind of cool. You can go part sideboard, part uh, flatbed. Hmm. Cool. Hmm. All the custom paint jobs are all just camo. Hopefully we can unlock more. Let's go with the uh, safety yellow. We're going to be out vibrating. That's good. Did I unlock any stickers yet? Nothing. Okay, let's go with the rear mounted rack. Adds an extra slot. Oh, that looks cool. Oh, spotlight mount. Cool. Oh, it actually adds an extra slot, too. Hmm. Heavy nerf bars. Against side impact. Hmm. Yeah, maybe we should put more money into tires before we do that. Oh, we got the uh, a better engine. Yeah, let's go with that. High range, meh. Do have a lift kit for that, but now we're out of cash. This will be fine. Didn't I paint this? Hmm. Yeah, more cash to bring those along too. Yeah, this is fine. I do like, though, that every time that we add inventory space, you know, it gives us extra. Uh, this is cool because if you're, if you're going to do the open world part, you can just bring a flatbed with you or something with a bunch of extra roof racks and whatever and go to all the drop pods. Or what you could do is you could bring the truck to a middle of an area with multiple drop pods, then bring a scout out there, have the scout pick up the stuff and bring it back to the truck. I think you can transfer inventories. I would hope that two trucks should be able to transfer inventories next to each other. And that'd be a cool way to like load up the big truck and have the little truck go out and do all the all the gathering. Something like that. I don't know, it just seems cool. Uh, use jack screw more than... Wait, you use the jack screw more than three times? Oh, th this means you're going to have to do replayability. This one's telling us use the jack screw more than three times. So they want you to purposely flip a vehicle? But then on the other hand, it says don't flip a vehicle more than three times. What the hell? You're going to have to play this mission twice, at least. That's weird. Oh, do we have to pay to have him come along? Price 700.
Oh, I think we just earned less money. Okay. All right, so let's not bring some of these guys along then. Marks, uphills, and downhills. Wait, is that a game mechanic to not have that on the map without this guy with you? I don't know. I think we should just bring David because he helps us to sell more stuff. Do these guys get a cut of the money? Well, then I'll never, I'd never hire them. How do I remove them? You guys are out. If you guys are gonna cost me money, you're out. <laughs> do it myself. Although I like David because he gets a 50 plus 50 percent higher sell price. All right, I guess only bring David along if you're gonna do a big O haul for only stuff to get you money. As in like the open world part where you're gonna load up the truck with a bunch of goodies to sell. That's what I do that for. All right, everybody's out. I'm going alone. Just me in the open road. And my seismic vibrator. Lucky Mexican, thank you very much for the five, dude. Appreciate it. Okay, we're learning things. I thought that was just like their unlock price, like their hiring price. And once they hired, then, then you're good. going to be interesting. Plasmic vibrator is used for geological expeditions. It shows the distance to points in the upper right part of the screen. You determine the direction yourself. At the distance of less than 150 meters from a point, a sound is signal sound signal is activated. After approaching the point, uh, less than 10 meters, uh, signal decreases and command appears to start scanning. Okay. Good vibrations. So Monty Burns gaming. We're getting closer to something. If it's up or down, I'm gonna guess up. Looks, <laughs> yeah, it looks like my car from TerraTech this morning. Yeah. The Goober wagon.
maybe down there. Welcome back, Iceman. Yeah, to avoid that engine damage, we just gotta get better suspension. Well, I could only guess the big old blue square is probably where we should go. I, oh, I, I did it. The gold mining contract. Thank you for your help. Now it's clear the gold has been mined here for many centuries. Your contribution is as valuable as gold, and you help light our story. I found a gold mine and then went to some arbitrary coast on the opposite side of that gold mine, and someone gave me $3,400. I'm not complaining. I'm not complaining. All right, well, that was cool. That was the contract we started before. So, All right, then. Yeah, you can clearly tell by this gold mining equipment that's not near the gold mine that they were mining gold. Okay, um... Floor the area with the size of the vibrator. Okay. Oh, we're within 50 meters, so let's uh, use it. Oh, it's definitely back up the hill. Yeah, this is definitely about more wheels and exploring. And honestly, that's something that I think, um, you know, we we do, whenever we get to a new map in SnowRunner, we immediately explore it for the watchtowers and then abandon all the scout vehicles and never touch them again. Scouting requ uh, deserves a little bit more credit in this game. This game is all about scouting. But even then, we're still using a off-road truck, but still it's fine. It's fine. So those caused damage. Thought it would collapse like one of those fences. Okay, we'll go all the way around then. No sneaking by.
<laughs> Hell yeah, brother. All right, let's vibrate. Wow, that was it. How did I get the bonus money? Used the jack screw more than three times. Didn't even bring one. Got the money for it. Don't flip the car more than three times. I didn't, so all right, cool. Take less than 50 damage per tire swap. Tire swap? What? I don't even know what that is. More questions and answers. Yeah, it seems like it's jacked and screwed. Damage taken, 12 points. Okay, not bad. That's like nothing. Stone Ford. Uh, they say the lake located near the camp cannot be crossed by truck. Go there and check it out. Just don't forget to take the accompanying tool with you. All right, that's easy. All these missions are like free money. I like money. Uh, what else can we use? I any of these could be used? Okay. Let's bring the Costco Canyon. Actually, uh, we only have a limited amount of money. Wait a minute. We have a prepayment of $2,700, but next to my name it says $8,640. Is that total money we've earned? I feel like if I if I use this truck, I feel like we should only pick trucks that we've already kind of used because we've customized them and that costs us money. Let's go back to this bad boy here. Wait, this one has 32 out of 54 upgrades. This one has 31. Whatever. Okay, inventory. We need to. We're supposed to bring two of these. And five of those. Oh, I see. It takes your it uses your prepayment money first, then switches to your main account. Okay. Mm -hmm. How about some new tires? Well, we gotta unlock those though. I don't think we can choose where we start our expedition at, can we? Oh, we can. I don't know, if we start over here, it gives us more to explore. I'll pick up some stuff on the way if we can. Oh, this is that same spot, okay. Get to the point. 
Boy, game's really pushy. Wait, why do we have to start here when we could just start at the main base? Is there not a way to do that? I feel like we should be able to choose either location. Is that not how that works? No, you get to pocket the pre-mission money before going on your expedition. That's interesting. Wait a minute. So you could start a mission, get the money for the prepayment, then quit the mission, and then have them... Wait a minute. Is that an exploit? You could start a mission, spend none of the prepayment money, or you could buy stuff in your inventory, then go back, and then get the money for it. So if you start a bunch of missions, you could just get the money for it. And then go back to base. And that seems like a big oversight, doesn't it? Because we started with 8,000 something. And then the game gave us a prepayment of 2,700. So if you start a bunch of missions in the early tutorial area, you, get, you could possibly get a bunch of extra money. Field operations base. Wait, does it cost a dollar to bring your truck there? What is, what is that one dollar? You can start from there. What the hell? I don't know why it showed one dollar. There's so many things in this game and in SnowRunner that just are just dumb. Like, did that cost me a dollar? It showed one dollar to, like, spawn here. I, I didn't know we could spawn here. I don't know. Isn't it expected that you're using the money to prep your vehicle? Yeah, true. But like if you, you know, if, if, if you start a bunch of missions and then go back to the menu, you could possibly pocket that money, but you're only going to use it on your vehicles to help later on. And at this point, the game may as well just give you a bigger initial funds. I don't know. I feel like there's a lot of things that they want you to do, but there's easy ways around. It's like a big obstacle course, but you can just walk around like the giant cargo net. Uh, jack screw. If you overturn, open the inventory where you find the jack screw and use it. Put your car back on its wheels. This has a limited number of charges and only works if the truck is overturned. Noob mode. You know what would be cool, though, is if we were also building a base, like... If there was a, a helipad on the opposite side of a valley and you have to go there and pick up a bunch of supplies and then load it up and bring it back to a base to set up like a few, you know, like you're, first you're setting up, I don't know, barracks and then a garage and then a, um, you know, like you're building the first garage in this region. So then you have to transport a fuel tank and set that up and then you have to bring over welding supplies so they can build the fuel tank and then, uh, and then you have to bring the fuel there. And then you could start exploring the region more, because now you got more fuel and stuff to do it. Something like that. Austin Powers. I think there's some cool new stuff in this game, though, for sure. But some of it's like, hmm. With a little experimentation, I think you could find some exploits. Yep, sounds like SnowRunner. Mm -hmm. now, if you want to use a winch, but there's no convenient point to connect to, use the anchor. The anchor can be placed on non-stony ground. Non-stony ground.
free money unlocked, brother. Yeah. This is just the tutorial area anyway. They're supposed these are just supposed to be easy free ways on how to play. Give you money and then you can customize. Nothing wrong with that. Alright, let's go on our last expedition. Heavy shipping. Uh, one of the forwarders is stuck in a swamp, so you'll have to deploy and evacuate the truck. This is a heavy truck. Ooh. Oh, I think that's the one we found before. You'll need a powerful vehicle to pull it out and take it to the outpost, so this take this into account when planning to deploy. Mm. Yep, 5th of March on this one. All right, I think we saw this truck before. Well, this got some pretty good power here, so let's use the Lodestar 1700 SE. And customize. Cool. Got the extendo cab. Uh, let's make it just good old red. Sweet. Oh, we have to unlock the pickup bed? Oh, bro, that would have looked so... Look at how badass that would have looked. That is true. That's a... That's a compact car right there. A European mind couldn't... Can't handle this. They couldn't comprehend this type of power and freedom. All in one. Look at that. I don't think we need to do much to this truck. Whoa, S plus rating on the power? Hell yeah, brother. Look at that. Fine tuning on the, uh, ooh, 7,000. Hold on, let's go for tires first. Yeah, we'll do that in the extendo winch. And I do know that's in a water area. Let's go with that. Searchlight. Provides a slight boost of vis visibility at night, really. Extendo roll cage, window guards, wow. Heavy window guards. Oh, this must be to keep the dinosaurs out. Heavy fenders. Nah, no, brother, that's all it needs right there. True freedom. Okay, where's the vehicle to rescue? There. So the eastern outpost is where we're going. Number of mods just doubled. Seven vehicles in one map. Really? Already? High noon, brother. Oh. Can you hear that? 
Oh, keep keep that parking brake on, brother. I just want to. Oh, I forgot we could go into neutral. Absolute freedom. Is there a bear guard here? Chat, you know what we found out earlier today? Just like last year. We found out that, uh, well, I already knew my, my birthday is on March 23rd. Do you know what day that International Bear Day happens to take place on? I'll give you a clue. It's the same day. Imagine that. all year. Actually, that's not a wrong answer either. Yeah, on the day I was born, the bears were like, alright, it's time. He has been born. I thought bears were cool, man. You got Baloo from Jungle Book. You got the Berenstein Bears. You got uh, Bear Grills. No. I use the winch to pull the vehicle out of the swamp after the winch is secured. Turn on the engine and of the towed truck. Okay. use a mouse for this one. There. Oh, it didn't work. Now where are we going? Back up the hill? No, we're just going back to where we started. Okay. That's nice. To be able to give slack in the line is awesome. Come on, bro. Oh, he's trying to get out of there, too. And, of course, we can't winch to another point. We've got to wait until Mudrunner 6 get the privilege, the access to that privilege. Uh, no. In this game, a lot of the vehicles are locked. You can get access to them, but you gotta do certain things. I don't know if we can do this. Hold on. I got a plan, but this is kind of dangerous. See if this works. I don't want to tip that truck over though.
fly the drone to get your bearings? Oh, yeah. Now nah, we'll just try to latch onto him some other way. I just want to get his uh, driver's side tire to just pop up on there, and then we got him. Oh, there we go. All right, that'll do. Well, they didn't say bring it back in working order. They just said bring it back. Mission was on clear. Dude, that's so awesome, the fact that we can let out slack in the winch. Then you don't have to, like, stop, disconnect, reposition. Oh, uh, no, you can't get out of the truck. You can switch vehicles, though. Uh, like, you can bring two or three vehicles with you, and you can either switch from the map or pull up next to it like you're getting out and getting into another one. Oh, it's coming along. It's coming. I don't know how he's got his engine on when he's turned over like that. Wait, this is a, this should be an easy fix here. should be an easy fix. Nope. Yeah, all right, that should be fine. Yep. As predicted. No runner skills, 100. It applies in this game, too. Hi, right, pal, let's go. Only a couple problems with this truck is one, it does, at the current moment, doesn't have uh, diff lock or all wheel drive. I don't know if we can change that. And the tires kind of suck, but it's got the S plus power rating, so that helped. But the winching options are that in this are absolutely amazing. To be able to make those anchors, to be able to let out the slack, all good stuff. And yeah, the music's good too. Uh, does this game have the same gameplay plus mode as SnowRunner where you can get access to all the vehicles from the start? There's also uh, different vehicles uh, that you can get access to. I, I should clarify that there's different versions of this game. Like there's a, I don't know, a, a super deluxe version or whatever it is. So there's um, a lot of the vehicles are locked behind performance and having to do things, but there is that where you can get like the... Um, there's like a year one pass and then like some other, I don't know, deluxe edition vehicles too that are like a little different. Recover the truck less than two times and take less than 200 damage. Good. Extendo. We have 4,000 bucks. Items sold 600. What did we sell? 
What? I don't understand. What, what did we sell? We got... We completed bonus objectives and we completed the main objective. And our anchors cost $1,200 to buy, so it's not like we got a refund for the anchors. Hmm. Confused. Hey, little Colorado is done. Perfect. Now we can go to Arizona. Which we haven't gone to before, but it'll probably look relatively the same. Okay. Oh, can we even go here? These are all locked. I think they want us to go to the Carpathians now. Yeah, we're going to have to come back to Arizona. Because we did that pro... We did a mission called Prologue. Yeah, here. Now they want us to do Stone Faced. But I guess it'll say. So it says 1 out of 12. So I guess it's linear, like they'll, or maybe semi-linear, like you probably unlock one or two missions and do those and then it unlocks more, maybe. Yeah, it looks like we can only do Carpathians, okay. I feel like they should make that more clear because people are going to be like, what, where do I go? Um, and it should just flash with the exclamation point, show you where to go. Stone faced. Or they should all be in order. Like, if you have to do these in order, then why... If they intend for you to do these in order, to where right now the only one we can do is stone-faced, then why not put them in order? Like, they, they imply it's like, oh, dude, you can go to all these places. Look at this. You can go to all... No. They may as well call it Mission 7. It's like, if you can go to Little Colorado, Arizona, Carpathians, but can't go to Arizona until you complete a certain number of stuff, then why put it... Why put it in this order? Should be Little Colorado first for the tutorial, then Carpathian second, then Arizona because it's supposed to be the hard area. Arizona had one mission. It's, it says 0 out of 37. Wait, it does. What the hell? Conquest of the Frontier. But it says 0 out of 11 at the top. Why the hell? What the hell? Why is that confusing like that? Or is that how many we've completed? One, two, three, four, five. We've completed five. Okay. Then this is mis this is misleading. Here it says five out of five expeditions. What it should say is five out of five expeditions completed then. Or what it should say is one available, and then in, below that it should say five out of five completed, or something like that. So what it should say is five out of five available, because we can replay them. And it should say five out of five completed, knowing that we can always go back to these if we want to. Because right there, look, it says it right there. Expedition complete. All right. So I needed chat to tell me that. So it's confusing. Like, you shouldn't have to go, you know, it shouldn't be buried under map one, expedition three, or whatever. Like, for the Arizona government. Like, what the f Anyway, I want more time with the trees, though. Let's go back to Carpathians. But I'm just saying, they, you know, it's like I hand you a menu with all these, you know, breakfast, lunch, dinner, dessert, all these drinks. But then everything on the menu is crossed off and all you can get is like, dude, look, look I bring over this massive menu, like a, like a check. Like, you know, when somebody wins a publisher's clearinghouse thing, bring over the giant novelty check and everything's crossed off and it says, uh, kid, the, the kid's hamburger. And then water. You know, got to look at, sir, would you like to see our drink menu? We'll need a, cr let, we're, we're having the roof of the building removed right now so we can have a Chinook helicopter bring in the menu for drinks. All of it's crossed off. All you can have is water. Everything's crossed off except for tap water. Why would you do that? Why would you do that? Just make this easier to like, you know, it, it, it has this illusion of freedom and choice, but you can't do anything. 
You can't do it. Like, it's all locked. Everything's locked. Free roam is not free. You have to earn it. Call it earned roam. Like, you know, I just, it's, it's the illusion of choice. It's a linear game. And that's fine. But be transparent about that. But now we can do the free roam of Little, Co Little Colorado. And now we can go back and, like, do whatever we want, right? Like, we can load into this. We can bring any truck and any spe specialist we want. We can go get those airdrops. We can go get those bones and other things and still have fun with the area. We can kind of make our own missions now. Kind of. Like, the mission is Operation Loot Goblin. But that's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. Don't give this illusion of choice. It's ridiculous. Do it differently. Because it implies that there's all this freedom and ex exploration. No! <sighs> Alright, let's go to Stone Faced. Local story about an ancient uh, mason who created the unique sculptures in the wilds. Uh, we learned that one of his creations was located not too far from the base. Find this place as it may be a cultural heritage site. If the expedition is successful, the customer will fund... Uh, the new outpost construction. It requires us to bring a hydrologist. Oh, we unlocked a workshop from this. All right, that's cool. Take less than 200 damage. Don't flip the car more than five times. Recognize at least five unknown points on the map. Okay. We're supposed to bring a hydrologist? Yeah. Alright, Anwar, you're you're coming with me. Field operation base one of four. I wonder what the one of four means. Vehicles you can deploy there? Or is that the base upgrade level? Can I upgrade the base? Bam 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 bam. Back in the forest. Can't wait to hear the Arizona soundtrack. We'll play Arizona next. We spent a lot of time in the desert, though. Hi, Alex. Cross the ford. Am I having another UHT moment? Yeah. Now let's see. It should be bad to our right. That's oh, actually not that bad.
start scanning. What the hell? The mini game? That's gonna be a bear. This is going to be interesting. Uh, oh boy. Mm -hmm. We may be able to go left. save. Explore the area. All right. Deploy the drone. Also, this is kind of a missed opportunity not to have a photo mode with the drone. Like, we should be able to um, remove the HUD and just take pictures. Not only of the truck, but also, like, you know, the environment. What's up, Screech? No, I haven't had the time. I'm per. Uh, I was uh, doing some big project. I will have time later today, though. Or well, tonight. So I guess the easiest way to explore the area is just to fly around your truck. Yeah, we're at 92%, yeah. 95. There we go. The guy carved a face into the mountain. Oh my god. Wait, what? What do you mean scanning pro you could see it clear as day, dude? It's like Mount Rushmore. Boy, I wonder where the face is. I wonder if we could find it. And it's gonna take a lot of hard work and several college degrees in order to do it. Figure out where this guy could be 
Damn. It's going to be a hard mission, guys. I still don't see it. What a fun min re game. Boy, I love that. Oh, there it was. Oh, dude. Oh, look at that sculpture. Yeah, wow. That's how I feel. That's how I feel playing this effing mini game. Recognize at least five unknown places on the map. Oh, I forgot to do that. I could have did that with the drone. Now we can come back and do it. Pretty, pretty straightforward mission. That one brings us to a different area. All right, let's go to Arizona. I want to see uh, the third map. Conquest of the Frontier. Uh... Arizona government. Here is the first serious contract. The government has lost cargo out uh, near our field base. Asks us to return it. You can deliver it to the base and then we can figure out how to send it to the recipient. Okay. Oh, we'll unlock Mike Nixon. And we get the heavy uh, bull bar bumper. So we're supposed to pick up cargo. Well, we'll bring that then. Are we supposed to bring somebody? Oh, we gotta bring the jack thing too. Why is that required? I feel like that. I feel like the jack should be optional, but maybe sometimes it should require you to have the winch thing if it sets up that way. All right, let's see if this is exactly like Arizona. Oh, it is, dude. There it is. Downtown Arizona. Right there. Oh, look. It's like a major highway right there. Wow. Jam-packed today. There's one person on it. Wow. Daytime. It's nice. We actually get to control the time now in the game. Like, we can make it daytime, which is cool. I like that.
From here you have a great view. Might be worth checking everything out with the binoculars. Oh, you must. The totem points to a safe path. Thank you, totem. Great. Also, it says to explore the area. So let's launch a drone. Do look, it's the Grand Canyon. There it is. Wow. You know, I feel like for this, instead of this arbitrary, like, randomly look around until the uh, thing in the upper right corner it fills up to 100%, they should give you, like, maybe three points of interest to go look at. And when you go to the center of an area that they tell you to go to, launch the drone, and then there should be just, like, you know, three things that they want you to zoom into a certain range and look at. I mean, they were kind of trying to do that with the whole totem thing. Apparently that scanned it? What the hell? Find a way up, that's a way down. Wish we had some American vehicles. That makes no sense, dude. Why would American vehicles be featured in America, such as Little Colorado and Arizona? We all know that those people drive Tatras and Bliatmobiles and Don 71s. There's no room here for Ford, Chevy, General Motor Company, and other providers who make off-road vehicles for the United States military. And for outdoorsmen, there's, there's just not a lot to choose from for America. Unfortunately, just wouldn't make sense. Like if, G if GTA Seven took place in Paris. 
for a place that was trying to simulate France, I'd expect to see Honda. I, I want drifting and Japanese kanji everywhere. That would be most realistic to me. I want Japanese kanji, highway style roads, and Toyota. Wow, Toyota and uh, and the others. Holy hell! How did I how did I manage this? Anyway. Cannot be used now. Now is the perfect time. Oh, does it have the engine thing that the other game did? Uh, we should be able to. Wait, where's our secondary objectives? Wait a minute. Does the game not even within the game list the secondary objectives for the particular mission you're on? Licensing plus lawyers. lawyers. What'd they do with all the money for 14 seasons of DLC for SnowRunner? Where'd that money go? The shareholder? Because I wouldn't, I wouldn't imagine the Embracer group who owns Saber putting the shareholder before the gamer or the employee. There's no way. There's no way that they would do that. You, yeah, you're telling me that the Embracer group would rather lay off people and scam their customers and the fans of their games rather than doing what's right? Come on, guys. It's ridiculous. 2024, corporations are honest, just, straightforward, and do what's best for everyone. Come on, guys. Let's not be that way. Uh, oh, my controller. So wait a minute. Okay, so when we're in an expedition, there's no way to see what the hell the secondary objectives were? I, like, I forgot what they were. Like, some of them are like, you know, don't take damage, you know, discover five discoverable points. Where the hell are my secondary objectives? Saber bought themselves out, thank God. Let them be free and liberated, thank God. I, I, I don't even know how to check my secondary objectives. This, this is yet another oversight. Like, where's my secondaries? Like, where, where do I go to see my secondaries? There. I had to go all the way back here to see the bonus objective of C take less than 200 damage. That should be displayed in the in the map menu, right? That's another thing that needs to change. Like, if you're going to have bonus objectives, let the player be reminded of what the bonus objectives are. You know what I mean? Also, I'm not criticizing as much as I feel like I'm pointing out things that perhaps could be changed to provide improvement to the game. Like, I feel like these are minimal things. Like, this is mostly UI. And I have the same complaints about Pacific Drive as well, which was an amazing game. Like, Pacific Drive is amazing. But there are some things about that game that I think could be displayed better. So I had to go all the way back here just to see that secondary objective of don't take damage. Man, that truck looks cool. Yeah, where, where's that secondary objective listed anywhere? Oh, that's amazing. Little Colorado was only 46% done, too. That's a tutorial area. So there's still two more contracts to do there. Two more tasks. Two more upgrades. Wait a minute. Didn't we find that... Wait a minute. Whoa, 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 whoa. 
Another problem. Didn't we find an upgrade in Lo Little Colorado? It was a, a shifter, right? Or something to do with the transmission. So shouldn't that be one of two? Unless it was part of a mission to find that, but still I feel like... Sometimes in games, you know, they'll give you a main mission that then leads into like a side mission or something. Like in Vice City, one of the missions to do is to like the, I don't know, the... The ice cream truck. So you get the ice cream truck, drive around, and then you can... You're done, but you can do more of it. What the hell? And also this says region completion 6 out of 13. I don't know what that means. Expeditions completed, 5 out of 6, got it. The last expedition then should be the free roam. Contracts. There's contradictions everywhere. So this is, should be called uh, Contradictions, a, a Mudrunner game. That's what it should be called. Not, a, not Expeditions, Contradictions. Like, don't, not, don't, don't, not start your vehicle. Okay, I'll start my vehicle. Mission 1 complete, you did it. I don't get it. Oh my god. Seems like the game needs a little bit of care before releasing. Yeah, I know. Okay. So the game is fun, but in terms of, like, tracking all that, like, the on-screen, like, you did three out of five things or something, I find that more often than not in games, too, where it's, like, you know, complete X number of objectives, and then I'll complete them, and then it's, like, I don't, I don't know. Well, that, so, in order to address the thing about Mud Runner versus Snow Runner or whatever, I think the reason why they didn't call this expedition a Snow Runner game is because if they didn't intend to release it with any snow maps, then there would have been even more confusion. So they had two options. They could have called the game Expeditions, which then people would have been like, dude, they just copied Snow Runner. Dude, they just copied Mud Runner. With people putting in negative 1% research rather than 0% research. To not know that this is literally made by the same people. So then the choice is, okay, we want to make another game, but we want it to be a little different to where it's more objective-based and about exploring. Cool. Do we do the snow? No. Okay. Well, let's call it Mud Runner then. Because there will be mud, and people are familiar with that branding, so we should do that. Okay, cool. The, the Runner. Because they couldn't call it, they could have called it Rock Runner Expeditions, but then that sounds like you're dealing crack. So it's like well, there's, there was really no good option for the name of this game. I think I think Expeditions of Mudrunner game is just fine. That's totally fine. Oh look at that! It skipped the whole exploration thing that we did before. Now we just have to go down there. Cool. Yeah, Rock Runner, a crack dealer game. It's like hey, run the border crossing. Don't let them catch you. Yeah, it's like contraband police. It's like you got 1,700 uh, kilos of coke in the uh, fender. Don't don't get caught. A cr crack runner, yeah. I don't know. No, no title is good. Mut 
Look, expedition and mudrunner game. That, that's probably that's probably about as good as that's gonna get. That's pretty good. Oh, you want me to drive up that? Are you high? Oh, they do. Wait. They mark it as over here. To the left. Oh, actually, that's a better way to go. Also, there's something over there. Oh, it's an airdrop. No! You jerk. <coughs> also, this is hilarious to me that it, it's an airdrop, but it still shows a question mark. Like, I think it's supposed to be a specialist perk in order to show what's on the map, but dude, just, just show it as a damn airdrop symbol. They'll never do it. Anyway, also, how do we recover? Is there a way to do that? Okay, there we go. Alright, cool. That was easy. Not a big deal. Alright, we're cool. Oh yeah, I could have used one of the jacks. Eh, whatever. That's yeah, fine. Feels like we're on a... I feel like we're on a different planet out here. I feel like we're not on Earth. Mars Runner, yeah. Much better that time. Scrap metal can be disassembled into parts in the workshop. As in, like, sp do they mean spare parts that can increase the number of... Do they mean that we can refill the amount of spare parts at a mission later, or does this mean that we can get free parts randomly at the garage? like a new tire or a new engine type. Like, I don't know what that means. More questions than answers. the box up there
Yeah, we're doing exploring. Leave the anchors here. How come I can't put stuff in the sideboards? Or can I? Oh. Also, we can refuel here. Feels so nice to be able to skip that pesky nighttime. It's so nice. Yeah, it's weird. We put stuff in our inventory, but not in the large like box section of the like the very thing a truck is designed to do which which is a cab with a holding area attached to it that can then move things from a to b oh dude there's no way we can put this dinosaur bone in the trunk dude it has to be buckled into the passenger seat otherwise it could die here. Diff lock, whatever. I can't believe I can't make that little crossing at all. Alright. Here's the real way to get across. You ready? Oh, you can't use diff lock in reverse.
Yep. Yep. That's how it goes. Oh. Did we take tire damage because we were driving with diff lock on? The hell that? Or did we hit a minefield? Wait, diff lock's not on. Oh, wait, I know why, because with the tires are not inflated. Oh, cool. So the tires can take damage for driving with low inflation. That's cool. That's neat. That's actually quite cool. Like, as it should be. Alright, now where are we going? Oh, we gotta go up there? Um, where are we now? Oh, we can just go here. Oh, but we gotta get down again. Um, we went this way, I think. go slow. Should be easy. Now I didn't mark that to get up, did I? Hmm. Yeah, this way seems safer. Can we move a marker? No. All right, we're good. Hell yeah, brother, brother, yeah. Oh, this game's going to be fun, though. I, I do think that this is going to be a fun and good single-player game that needs some improvements with the UI and stuff in terms of being uh, more straightforward with certain things and not causing confusion by not being consistent across places. The map and a few things in the menus and completion and whatnot. But I wonder, my biggest curiosity is how this is going to be fun in co-op. Because what we've done so far, just one person could do. Like, go to this place, pick up a dinosaur bone, and come back. It's like, well, I don't know how you would get two, three, or four people to even do that. Like, does everyone just have to do it themselves? Like, the mission just gets multiplied, multiplied by four, and everybody's just got to carry one? I feel like there'd be more interesting co-op missions that are co-op specific. Like, hey, we need you to get across this really dangerous river crossing, so we recommend that you bring a bridge layer. Okay, so one person can bring the bridge layer. But there's also some really dangerous area here with a lot of rocks. So you'll need to do a lot of rock climbing. Oh, cool. We'll get so-and-so to bring uh, anchors, and they could be at the front of the convoy. It's a long distance, so you might want to bring fuel. There's no airdrops over there. Okay, someone can bring the fuel tank truck or whatever. And someone else might want to bring a sideboard because there's a drop. 
uh, airdrops along the way, so they might want to pick up stuff. Okay, we can do that. I'm curious to see how it's going to work. the tires. That's cool. I did not expect to see that. Wait. Before I deliver this, it'll it'll complete the mission if I do this. So I should deliver the supplies first. If I drop this off, it'll just go to the mission complete screen, but I don't know if it'll auto-sell the cargo. Because, like, right now we have some bonus stuff on us that we can sell. I don't know, I feel like you shouldn't have to go and sell them. Like, if, if they're on you and you complete the mission, it should just sell because... You're just going to use that money for truck parts anyway. So if I go here to sell... And this says, can be disassembled into parts in the workshop. The workshop is a truck attachment that we can bring with us. But if I keep this in my inventory, do I get to keep it outside the mission? I think I'm going to keep this because it specifically says workshop. But here it says this is valuable to the museum. Is this mission-based stuff? I have no idea. What's a key item and what... Like, will the museum buy that? Or is that a key item for some other quest? More question than, than answers, really. I think they should color code things or give everything a symbol. To let you know whether it's for this mission, a different mission, a side mission, or like a... Just a money-making thing. Items sold, 750. Okay. But then do I get the scrap? I feel like the the scrap would have only been useful if I had the workshop attachment with us. To which I guess the workshop attachment then would convert that into parts that could then be used on other vehicles. But it's like we're barely taking I don't it just seems not necessary to use all that. It's like, brother, we brought enough fuel to fuel an aircraft carrier and all of its jets for six months. It's like, well, we were just driving to the store and back. Well, we, we won't even use like an eighth of a tank. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. But that that's what confuses me is all the wording and stuff like that. It was the, It's the same about Pacific Drive and stuff like that, too. It's like, how does that work? I'm going to have to work with Nicholas to figure out all this stuff because I feel like a lot of things are cryptic and they shouldn't be. Like, again... The parts disassembled in the workshop for parts. What does that? What does that mean? Does that mean if I would have brought the workshop attachment for the truck? Does that mean we would have randomly unlocked parts for other vehicles? Is that what that means? Like, it, does it randomly give you something? Because it, it seems like the way to find parts in this game is either a the metal detector to which it'll turn green and you can go dig it up in the free roam mode, or b doing what I just said with the whole workshop thing. Because, like, let's take a look at another vehicle real quick. So... Where the hell is this thing? Yeah, that one can't handle that. Ooh. Some of these also get modifiable exhaust. I didn't see that. Is 
There it is, the workshop. A workshop module equipped with all the necessary tools required for an expedition allows the player to fully repair vehicles without recovering to the fob. But then, when you have the scrap parts, it says it could be used in the workshop. So I guess this just adds more. If the workshop is low on parts, this is a thing for the workshop to go pick up and then replenish its repair parts. So fuel to a fuel tank, this would be repair parts to the workshop, I guess. I, don't know, I was just thinking like maybe it would unlock other things. Like this. But it doesn't seem like it would make sense to do that because here it says it's complete the hunting, helping or herding mission. So I think that's that there's certain parts that you have to find and certain parts. Because it does say, some of them said to just go explore. Like where did, yeah, explore the region to find it. Okay, so this is what it must be. But this is misleading too because here's, here's the, where the confusion comes in. This says to explore the region to find it. Which region? The one we're in? I like, are they confirming that this is in Arizona? In the Grand Canyon District? Is that what they're saying? Or do they mean any map? Like, I, I just need to know how, the, how, how that system works. Like, if we use the metal detector to go find upgrade parts and we're looking for a specific part for a specific truck, at least if it, narrow, if it narrows it down to... Um, if it narrows it down at least to a particular region, that makes it easier. But the problem is, too, is that it says explore the region. Well, we've got the Grand Canyon. You know, we, we got four like maps to discover like this is the Arizona region but then you could also say that these like the Grand Canyon is also kind of a region that's a pretty big place man that's not just like a small town yeah I feel like finding the parts will be the most fun yeah the missions are cool they're all pretty basic go here pick this up go do that but it seems like they'll get more a little more complex with their routes like it, it looks like they're all kind of like small to medium scale like this game is more this is more bite-sized. Like when you go into SnowRunner, it could take you literally weeks to complete some of those, like new, even the new DLCs that just feature a new map. But in this game, it feels like this could take you weeks to get through the full game, which is cool. And the multiplayer, you know, will come about eventually, and maybe they'll add some more con combat uh, content to it as I <laughs> as I combat the UI system and some of the some of the systems like. I, I just need to learn, I need to know what these mean. Like, you know, what does it mean to scrap those parts? So I guess me and Nicholas will find it out in the next couple of days as well. All right, so this is available for everybody on March 5th, if you're wondering. Not a sponsored stream or anything, but I really like SnowRunner a lot, and I really like MudRunner a lot, and Spin Tires, and I think this is a good addition to that. It's a different thing. It feels like a dessert. In, in comparison, uh, SnowRunner is like a big o heavy meal. That's like a big heavy beef stew or something like that like you're wiped out you need a nap after it but this one's like a nice dessert it's like not too filling pretty sweet probably not good for you but <laughs> it's fun it's good all right guys i'm gonna send you all live right now to a video of this game on the channel and uh, i would love for you all to watch it and uh, let me know your thoughts in the comment section on the new video uh, it's going to feature some things that you ha maybe haven't seen yet today in today's uh, live stream so I'm going to send you all over to that YouTube premiere live right now. You guys will be the first ones on YouTube to see it, so don't miss it. The link will pop up in the chat. Click that link or you'll miss out on being some of the first to watch it. So let me know what you all think about uh, SnowRunner, MudRunner, or Expeditions, a MudRunner game, and compare them all. So click or tap that link. It'll bring you live right now to the YouTube premiere, which is a video that everyone's watching all at the same time. And we'll be back to manage a grocery store in just a little bit. Thank you guys, everybody, for watching. And I hope to see you all in our next Big O streams. Thank you, everybody. I hope you all enjoyed our first look at Expeditions, a Mudrunner game. We'll see if we can check this one out tomorrow before the big news. The big news. What?